Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. I bring you greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Gateway to Life and I am Bridget Ogbefo. You are welcome and I trust that the Spirit of God has something in store for us this morning or afternoon or whatever time you may be watching this. Um, I pray that the Spirit of God will make His Word meaningful to you even as you listen to it today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. I thank you, O God, for such a beautiful time to be available, to be used of you, to bring your word to this beautiful people that may be hearing the sound of my voice or watching me at this time. Father, I thank you, O God, for this opportunity, and I ask, Lord, that you accept my thanks and praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty and everlasting God, your word is powerful. Your word is potent. Your word is able to save. Your word is able to deliver. Your word is able to change. Your word is able to give life. Lord, I ask that all this, your word, we do now, even as I go into it in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you brood on this word, that as the words come, it will not just be mere ink on paper. It will become life. It will become zoe to those that will be hearing it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the vessel that you are using, Tobago Inspirational Network. Thank you because you will continue to take them from height to height and this establishment shall continue to expand and to grow in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. Father, whoever it is that is out there who is confused, who is asking questions, who is looking for solutions, who don't know what to do at this time, let your word Lord, bring illumination to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have heard me for I've prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Again, you are welcome to Gateway to Life. And so today we shall be looking at what I titled the Porter's House. The Porter's House. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, when I was preparing for this message, I actually took a trip, not physically, took a trip, you know, in terms of um, intellectually to the potter's house, reading materials and watching things, you know, and observing the things that happen within the potter's environment. And I came up with some things that I'll be sharing with us, and I pray that we are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's quickly look at our text that is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18 from verse 1. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessels that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. And so he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Verse 5, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? said the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand. Hallelujah. O house of Israel. Look at verse 7. It says, At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Look at verse 8. It says, If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. 
And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. Look at verse 10. And if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not. I want you to take note of that word. That it obey not my voice. Then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I will benefit them. The potter's house. And when you think, or if you have ever been opportune to physically visit a potter's house or a potter's, you know, uh, 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 factory, you will realize there are so many things that the potters have around him that he works with. But one that stands out, one major thing that makes him called a potter <laughs> is clay. You would hardly go by a potter's shop or a potter's a factory or a potter's, you know, a, 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 a office or for the want of one word, and you will not find clay there. Potters work with clay. And what do they do with this clay? If you look at the interesting passage we read this morning, Jeremiah chapter 18 that we just read from verse 1 through 10, you will realize that God himself understands the importance, the message behind the clay and the potter. What happens, what transpires with the potter and the clay. God knows the importance to the extent that he had to carve out a whole message from this scenario. And so like I told you, clay is very important in the hands of a potter. When you go to a potter's house, one of the things that you see is clay. And so today we want to look at some of the characteristics of clay. What are the things that a clay would possess that will help the potter to achieve the best result that he or she can achieve? Number one, we are looking at the clay. May I quickly remind you that based on the scriptures we read just now, that you and I are the clay and God himself is the potter. God himself is the one who molds us into what he wants us to be as the clay. You know, I try to look up a meaning for the word potter. It says a potter is a, prof is a professional who creates fashions, and sells pottery. He creates, he fashions, he designs things like pots, things like, you know, cups, things like vases, things like bowls. He fashions them into the shape and designs that he wants and could make a merchandise of it. He sends it where he wants it to go. He sells it to who he deems feel, who is able to afford it. Those are what a potter, some of the things that a potter does is a craft person who shapes pottery. A, on a potter's wheel, he chooses the design himself. So that takes us to the characteristics of, of, of clay in the hands of a potter. One of the things that stood out when I was studying for this, is not all clay that a potter could work with. For a potter to be able to work with a particular kind of clay, it must possess some qualities. For example, a dried up clay cannot be worked with. A potter cannot mold a clay that is dried up unless he breaks it down again, puts water in it and some other agent that they would use and then it will become moldable. So that takes us straight to number one, characteristics of the clay. Don't forget that I just mentioned that you and I are the clay and God is the potter. If you look at what we read in Jeremiah chapter 18, the Bible says, the Bible says, it says that the, the potter chooses to walk on the clay on the wheels and he does what he wants he creates them into the vessels that he wants so number one the clay never contains with the potter from that vessel that 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 um that um portion we read the bible says that there was even an instance where the clay was mad the clay was kind of damaged in the hands of the potter the Bible says that the potter broke it down and reshaped it. 
So number one, for you to be able to enjoy God, to take you to the place that he has earmarked for you, you must be ready not to contend with God's instruction. Not to argue with the things that God wants you to do. I know we are in that time of the year. You know when the devil thrives in pushing people into the place of depression. Because we are already in the middle of November. And some of us look back, you say, all oh, the things you had desired for God to do for you this year, look, the year's running to an end. And for me in particular, I feel this year really went fast. And you're beginning to think, I didn't achieve anything. I, 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 I didn't achieve all the things that I wrote down at the beginning of the year. My dear brothers and my sisters, God is still the potter and is willing to shape on you into what he wants you to be. But are you ready to submit to him? Are you ready not to contend with what God has in store for you? So the clay does not argue with the potter. The clay has no choice, has no choice where the potter is concerned. The clay releases itself into the hands of the potter to make it into what the potter wants it to become. As a matter of fact, the clay, you know, relaxes in the hand of the potter. That is why the potter is able to break it down and rebuild it again, even when he sees that the clay is mad in his hand. I don't know who is watching me today and where you are watching from, where you're hearing the sound of my voice from. Right now, your life looks as if it is mad. Right now, it looks as if nothing is coming together. Right now, it looks as if everything is mashed up, as we will say it here. But I've come to tell you, I've come to remind you, there is a potter that is willing to work with you. Are you ready to possess these characteristics of a, of a clay? Are you ready to be submissive to the potter's will? The clay in the potter's hand does not tell the potter, I want to be molded into a pot or I want to be molded into a bowl. The potter works with the clay on the wheel and shapes it. And you know one thing that stood out? You know in a potter's house, there's something called a wheel. This is like a machine, you know, that spins around upon which the potter placed the clay. And in the process, it begins to mold, you know, the clay into the shape that he wants it to take. That wheel does not stop, stop turning. It does not stop spinning until the potter wants it to stop. And when it is spinning at that time, the clay is going through what looks like an inconvenience, what looks like an uncomfortable situation. But you know what? In that uncomfortable situation, the potter is making the best out of the clay. And so today, are you willing to submit to the potter's will? You must be submissive to the will of God if you must come out the best that you can be. If the potter will be able to mold you into the best you can become, you must be willing to submit to the will of God. Even our ultimate example, our Lord Jesus Christ, he knew this. And that is why Luke chapter 22 and verse 42 will say, Luke 22 and verse 42, hallelujah. We are talking about the potter's house. We are talking about submitting to the will, the clay possessing the ability to submit to the will of the potter. Look at what the Bible says in Luke chapter 22 and verse 42, hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke 22 and verse 42. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a saying, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Look at the next part. It says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus Christ was like clay in the hands of the potter. When he was going through this uncomfortable situation, when he was going to this trying moment, when he was going to this pain, he said to God, he said, if it is possible, let this cup pass. Remove this situation from my path. Take away this pain. Take away this experience. But he quickly remembered that without the potter, the clay is actually nothing. 
Without the potter, the clay will lie down there shapeless and without form. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Are you willing to confess such? Are you willing to submit to the will of God? Even in that situation that you are going through. I know times could be tough. I know situations could be hard. I know tears could flow at times. I know you may come out all lovely and sweet. You may come out with all smiles well made up and well dressed up. You may come up beautiful, you know, in all ramification. But in your closet, you are crying bitter tears. You are weeping. You are crying and trusting God for things that seem to be far away from you. I've come to tell you there's hope for you. The plan of God for you is good. He told us clearly in his word, Jeremiah 29. He said, he, he, he told us, he said, the will, the, 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 his desires for us, they are of good and not of evil. God has good plans for you, but are you willing to submit to him just as our Lord Jesus Christ did here? Are you willing to submit to him just like a clay in the hands of the potter? Are you willing to leave yourself to him? You say, I've tried. I've used all the connections. I've gone to everywhere I know. I've done all the things I know to do. Yet nothing is going. Nothing looks, seems to be getting better. Why not relax in the hand of the potter like the clay? Hallelujah. Number two, the clay does not determine what it will become. The clay does not choose what it will become. It does not dictate to the potter what it wants to become. The potter is the one who looks at it and says, okay, I will form this one into a vase. I will form this one into a pot. The clay does not argue with the potter. We are still on that point. The potter chooses the shape the clay takes. If the clay chooses not to conform to the potter, the, 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 what the potter wants it to be, it will be destroyed. It will be, get mad. It will become useless. So the same way, God may be speaking to you concerning certain things I don't know who I'm speaking to right now. Because he expects you like clay to release yourself in his hands. To say, I put my hands in your hands, O oh Lord. I do not know the way, you know the way. The potter, the clay cannot speak and say, this is what, this is how I want you to form me. This is how I want to be shaped. If that happens, it means there's something wrong somewhere. So that tears that you are crying, that job that you lost, have you asked God why it happened? Do you know if God is saving you from an impending calamity? Do you know if God is trying to protect you from a danger ahead of you? Do you know if God is doing that so that you will be able to seek further because there's a greener pasture waiting for you somewhere? Do you know if God is allowing that to happen so that you will use it as a stepping stone to get to your next level in life? Rather than questioning God, asking him all kind of things in the process, you know, saying the things you ought not to say, why not like the clay? Allow the potter design you the way he wants you to be designed. Mold you the way he wants you to be molded. Why not allow God to do it? Hallelujah. Never try to become what God has not called you to be. When you try to do that, you are like trying, like a clay that is trying to dictate to the potter the shape and form that he will want to take. Never try to become what God does not want for you. How do you know this? Through the word of God. That is the bottom line. We must always come back there. Something stood out to me in the potter's house, you know, when the clay is on the wheel and that wheel is turning around and the potter is shaping the, 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 the clay, it would always dip his hand in, in, in water because water helps to soften the clay and to make it easier for it to be shaped. That water represents the word of God. 
Because the Bible says, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. It wasn't talking about literal water. It wasn't talking about the physical water. It's talking about the word of God that is stored on your inside. So rather than complaining and questioning God and making it seem as if God is no longer the perfect one, and making it look as if God is no longer the one who knows the end from the beginning. And making it look as if God is no longer the first and the last. And making it look as if God is no longer the omnipotent, omniscient. The almighty, the creator of all things. Instead of making it look like that. Just like that clay is submissive. Why not choose to become what God has a mark for you. Instead of using your, your, your colleague as your yardstick, instead of looking at your peers and comparing yourself with them, what God wants for you might not be what he wants for them. The route through which they travel to get to the level they got to today might not be where God wants you to go. God has something beautiful for you and he also has the method through which he will get you there. If I were you, I would seek to know this God so that I will understand what his plan is for me. Even though his word says that ears have not heard, neither has it been conceived in the heart of any, you know, what God has for us. I would rather stick onto this God I would rather hold on to him and I will advise you to do the same. If he knows my end from my beginning, I would rather hold on to him and let him lead me through. That is what the clay actually does. The clay actually says to the potter, I don't know what shape or form I want to take, but I trust you. I trust your expertise. I trust your, your, your creative ability. Come on. How many of us can tell God like that and say, God, I trust you. It doesn't make sense. Everything happening around me right now don't make sense. I don't see light anywhere, but Lord, I trust you. Not just by words of mouth, not just by uh, um, a rhetoric, but by your actions. You are telling God, I believe you. I may not have the money in my pocket, but I believe you. God has shown you what your future is, how bright it is, how beautiful it is. Right now, you look at your life. There is no collaboration with the way you are now, with where God has told you that you are going. You may be in ministry, and God has given you a blueprint. He has told you, this is how you will touch lives. This is how you will affect many. Right now, you are struggling. But my dear brother and my sister, if God said it, believe it. Because his word says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. It may look impossible. It may resemble that it is impossible. But I've come to tell you without no iota of doubt. What God says stands forever. If he has promised you. It doesn't matter how many times you are falling on your way to where God has called you to be. My dear brothers and my sister, keep moving on like the clay in the hands of the potter. Keep moving. Submit to his will and watch him take you to your place of enlargement. Hallelujah. A result-oriented clay is very flexible. I told you at the beginning that potters cannot work with hardened clay. The clay must be flexible. You know why? So that the potter can maneuver it, can walk around it, can shape on it, can change it. You know something? Sometimes when you are looking at the potter, walking with the clay on the wheel, you as a human being, as an inexperienced person who does not have experience in pottery, 
In the beginning, you don't know what the potter is molding. Come on, hallelujah. You just see the potter with the, with the clay on the wheel. To you, it looks shapeless. To you, you don't understand what is going on. But give it time, my dear brother and sister. Then you will watch the potter, you know, with his fingers, with his touch. Before you know it, by the time it's done, you see this beautiful creative art done by the potter. So right now you are like in that stage, you may be in that stage where people can't understand what God is doing with you. Why is her life like this? Why is his life like this? I thought he's a Christian. I thought he's a committed Christian. He's always on his way to church. How come we are not seeing the signs in his life? After all, the Bible says signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Why are we not seeing the signs? Why is he not showing it? Why is he not rich? Why is he suffering? Why is he not... All kind of things people may be yelling and talking and yapping behind you. But I've come to tell you, my dear brother and my sister, remain on the wheel of the potter. Remain like that clay on the wheel of the potter. With time it will make sense. With time the shape and the design will come out. With time, you know, the importance of that clay that looked shapeless and formless in the beginning. With time, it will come out. And you know what? At that time, when the potter finishes with that piece of clay and that beautiful art is brought out, he places a price on it. He places a price on that piece of art because he knows what he put into it. He knows how, what it took him to create that verse. And that is why you see people come and they are willing to buy, what, uh, 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 to put down their money to get the piece of art because they know what is what. That is where God is taking you to. When it's true with you, those who are laughing at you now, they will come to laugh with you. Those who are mocking you now, they will come to bow before you. Those who are looking at you as if you will amount to nothing. They will come to glorify the name of God in your life. It is not over. My dear brother and my sister, remain in the hands of the potter. Stay on the wheel. You may be spinning and going around. Remain on the wheel. Let the potter finish his work on you. And in the end, all shall know that God is good people of God, I will be wrapping up here today and we'll come back to continue from where we stopped and until I come back next time, be confident that God is for you and none can be against you. Shalom. Enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.